coins, electric wiring, plumbing pipes, circuit boards, and even car parts all have one thing in common, copper. This remarkable metal has been humanity's companion for over 10,000 years, and today it's more essential than ever. It's one of the best conductors of electricity and heat, making it indispensable for wiring, heat sinks, motors, transformers, and cookware. Each year, over 26 million tons of copper are consumed around the world. That's equivalent to the weight of 180 million cars. But where does it all come from? Today we'll take you on an extraordinary journey from the depths of the earth through explosive mining operations, complex chemical processes, and precision manufacturing, all the way to the shining copper wires that make modern life possible. 1. Geological Survey and Site Preparation It all begins deep in the Earth's crust, sometimes a kilometer or more below the surface. Before mining starts, geologists spend months identifying promising copper deposits using satellite imagery, magnetic surveys, and core drilling. Once a viable deposit is confirmed, typically containing at least 0.5% copper, the real work begins. Teams prepare the site with powerful machines, including bulldozers, excavators, and graders weighing over 100 tons. Housing complexes, offices, medical facilities, and warehouses are built near the mine to support hundreds or thousands of workers. Roads capable of handling 400-ton haul trucks are constructed. Power lines deliver enormous amounts of electricity. Some large copper mines consume as much power as a small city. Everything is planned carefully with environmental impact assessments, water management systems, and safety protocols. Modern mines also implement dust suppression systems and groundwater monitoring to minimize environmental impact. 2. Blasting and Excavation Strategically drilled holes, sometimes 15 meters deep, are positioned in precise patterns across the rock face. Specialized drilling rigs, guided by GPS and computerized systems, create blast holes with millimeter accuracy. Each hole is filled with carefully measured amounts of ANFO, explosives, a mixture of ammonium nitrate and fuel oil. Electronic detonators fire in a specific sequence, milliseconds apart, to control the blast direction and force. When detonated, the blast exposes copper-rich rock called ore. A single blast can move 100,000 tons of material. In the control tower, engineers monitor seismic activity, ground movement, water levels, air pressure, and dust dispersion to ensure safety. Modern mines use computer modeling to predict blast patterns and minimize waste. After each blast, the area is cleared of dangerous fumes and inspected before work crews can enter. 3. Ore Collection and Loading After blasting, massive machines get to work. Electric rope shovels and hydraulic excavators, some with buckets holding 50 cubic meters, gather tons of broken rock mixed with valuable copper ore. These engineering marvels are designed for extreme durability, handling crushing weights and temperature extremes from minus 40 to plus 50 degrees Celsius. The excavators load ultra-class haul trucks whose tires alone stand 4 meters tall and cost $40,000 each to replace. To maintain ground stability, engineers install ventilation shafts, drainage systems, reinforced pillars, and support structures throughout the mine. In underground operations, remote-controlled loaders work in narrow tunnels, reducing risk to human operators. Advanced sensors monitor ground stress in real time, warning of potential instabilities. Some modern mines employ autonomous haul trucks that operate 24-7 without drivers. 4. Transport to Processing Next, copper-rich rocks are loaded into load haul dump trucks, LHDs, designed for underground mining. These trucks transport material from the mine face to the processing plant, sometimes several kilometers away. 
Each vehicle carries up to 20 tons per load, ensuring smooth and continuous operation. Above ground, massive haul trucks follow carefully planned routes, their movements coordinated by fleet management systems that optimize fuel consumption and minimize congestion. Conveyor belt systems, stretching for kilometers, supplement truck transport in many operations. At the processing plant entrance, trucks pass through automated weighing stations and radiation detectors before dumping their loads onto massive stockpiles. 5. Crushing and Grinding Processing begins by breaking down the ore. Primary jaw crushers, massive machines with steel jaws exerting thousands of tons of pressure, reduce car-sized boulders into basketball-sized rocks. Then, cone crushers, gyratory crushers, and impact crushers further reduce the material to less than 10 millimeters in diameter. But we need to go even finer. Ball mills and sag mills grind the ore into a powder as fine as flour. These rotating drums, some over 10 meters in diameter, are filled with thousands of steel balls weighing several tons. As the drum rotates at 15 to 25 revolutions per minute, the grinding media cascades down, pulverizing the ore. Water is added to create a slurry, and grinding continues for hours until the optimal particle size is achieved, ensuring copper minerals can be efficiently liberated from surrounding waste rock. 6. Flotation Separation the ground ore slurry is mixed with water and carefully selected chemicals. Collectors, organic compounds like xanthates, selectively bind to copper sulfide minerals, making them hydrophobic or water repelling. Meanwhile, depressants prevent unwanted minerals from floating, and frothers create stable bubbles. Inside large flotation cells, tanks holding hundreds of cubic meters, compressed air is injected, creating millions of tiny bubbles. These bubbles attach to the hydrophobic copper particles and lift them to the surface, forming a mineralized froth rich in copper, typically containing 20 to 30 percent copper compared to the original 0.5 to 2 percent in the ore. The waste rock, called tailings, sinks to the bottom and is removed for safe disposal. The copper-rich froth is skimmed off and sent through multiple flotation stages, each time concentrating the copper further. This process can achieve recovery rates exceeding 90%. 7. Smelting, Refining, and Purification The copper concentrate, still containing about 30% copper along with iron, sulfur, and other impurities, is transported to a smelting facility. Here, it's fed into furnaces heated to over 1200 degrees Celsius. The intense heat melts the concentrate and begins separating copper from impurities. Oxygen is blown through the molten material, oxidizing iron and sulfur, which are removed as slag. What emerges is blister copper, approximately 98 to 99 percent pure. But modern applications demand higher purity. The blister copper then goes to an electrolytic refining plant for final purification. Here, electrolytic refining transforms it into 99.99 percent pure copper. Thick copper plates, anodes, are immersed in tanks filled with sulfuric acid and copper sulfate solution. Thin starter sheets of pure copper serve as cathodes. When electric current passes through, copper ions dissolve from the impure anode and deposit as pure copper on the cathode plates. This process takes about two weeks. Impurities either fall to the bottom as anode slime, often containing gold, silver, and platinum, or remain in solution. The result is cathode copper, sheets of 99.99% pure copper, each weighing about 100 kilograms, ready for manufacturing. The Statue of Liberty is covered in copper. The iconic statue contains over 80 tons of copper sheeting, originally a shiny reddish-brown color. Over the years, it turned blue-green because of patination. Copper reacts with oxygen, water, and carbon dioxide to form copper carbonate and copper sulfate compounds. This patina layer actually protects the metal underneath from further corrosion, which is why the statue has lasted over 135 years with minimal maintenance. 8. Melting and Casting The refined copper cathodes are melted in holding furnaces maintained at around 1,150 degrees Celsius. The molten copper is carefully monitored for temperature and purity.
depending on the final application, the copper might be alloyed with small amounts of other metals, tin for bronze, zinc for brass, or kept pure for electrical applications. The molten copper is then cast into various forms, billets for extrusion, ingots for rolling, or continuously cast into wire rods. The continuous casting process is fascinating. Molten copper flows through a water-cooled mold, solidifying into an 8 to 9 millimeter diameter rod that emerges continuously, like copper spaghetti, and is coiled onto large reels. 9. Cold drawing process. The copper rods are now shaped into precise dimensions through cold drawing. These rods are pulled through progressively narrower dies made of extremely hard materials like diamond, tungsten carbide, or specially treated steel. The process is called cold drawing because it happens at room temperature. As the copper passes through each die, it stretches, becoming thinner, stronger, and longer. A single piece might pass through 20 or more dies in sequence. This plastic deformation aligns the metal's crystal grains, significantly improving its mechanical properties. The process also work hardens the copper, increasing its tensile strength while maintaining excellent electrical conductivity. 10. Wire Drawing and Strengthening To make electrical wires suitable for everything from power transmission to delicate electronics, thick rods are drawn through multiple dies with progressively smaller holes. A rod starting at 8 mm diameter might be drawn down to 0.1 mm or thinner. That's thinner than a human hair. This creates thin, long copper wires with extremely precise diameters, controlled to within micrometers. Modern wire drawing machines can produce wire at speeds exceeding 30 meters per second, with laser micrometers continuously measuring diameter. For extra flexibility, multiple thin wires might be twisted together to create stranded cable, perfect for applications where the wire must bend repeatedly without breaking. Did you know copper is naturally antimicrobial? Scientific studies have proven that copper and its alloys can kill bacteria, viruses, and fungi on contact, typically within hours. Copper ions disrupt microorganisms' cell membranes and interfere with their DNA. This property was known to ancient civilizations who stored water in copper vessels. Today, hospitals install copper alloy doorknobs, bed rails, and touch surfaces to reduce healthcare-associated infections. Some studies show copper surfaces can reduce bacterial contamination by over 90% compared to stainless steel. Number 11. Quality control and rolling. Once the copper wires are manufactured, they're wound onto large spools, some containing several kilometers of wire. Autonomous robots transport these rolls across the facility for rigorous testing and packaging. Every batch undergoes quality control tests, electrical conductivity measurements, tensile strength testing, surface inspection, and dimensional verification. Before distribution, copper products may undergo heat treatment to ensure optimum mechanical properties. Some copper products are coated with tin, silver, or polymer insulation, depending on their application. The final products are then packaged, labeled, and prepared for shipment to manufacturers worldwide. Copper is incredibly durable. It can last for centuries without degrading. Ancient copper artifacts from civilizations over 5,000 years old still survive today in remarkable condition. The natural patina that forms on copper creates a protective barrier that resists corrosion. Some copper roofing installed in the 1700s is still functional today. This longevity, combined with copper's recyclability, it can be recycled indefinitely without losing properties, makes it one of the most sustainable metals we use. From explosive mines deep in the earth to delicate wiring in your smartphone, copper's journey is a perfect blend of geology, engineering, chemistry, metallurgy, and human ingenuity. Every step requires precision, expertise, and cutting-edge technology. This ancient metal powers our homes, builds our machines, enables renewable energy systems, and literally connects our modern world through the internet and telecommunications. The next time you flip a light switch, plug in your phone, or turn on your car, 
Remember the incredible journey that copper has taken and the hundreds of people whose expertise made it possible. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the fascinating world of copper production, hit that like button, subscribe for more amazing stories about the materials that shape our world, and ring that notification bell so you never miss our next exploration into engineering and technology.